Good morning, fifth graders, Tristan and Evan. I want to go over some um, things that I see that we need to review over. And then I'm going to go over today's lesson. So it might be a little lengthy. So um, just uh, hang in there with me, okay? But I think this is important because y'all do have a test tomorrow. And I want y'all to do really, really good, okay? So um, let's go back over Fahrenheit and Celsius, okay? I see some trouble there still. We're not using the same, we're not using the proper formula that we need to uh, be using, okay? So let's talk about, first off, finding Fahrenheit. So when you're finding Fahrenheit, you're going to use the formula F equals 9 fifths times C plus 32. Okay, well... When y'all, when y'all know y'all are going to use this particular formula, that is when they're giving you what C is and you're trying to find what F is, okay? Because you're going to put C in where C is in the formula, okay? You're going to input that, insert that number they give you, that temperature. So... Um, let's see here, um, huh, I want a good number here. Let's see, what can we have, what can we have our Celsius and what do we want to make our Celsius? Um, let me see if they have one on today's lesson. They sure do. Okay, they want you on the back, on number 7A, they want you to convert 70 degrees Celsius into Fahrenheit. So that's what it looks like on A7. This is telling you, they're giving you what C is. So you know you're putting this 70 exactly where that C is in the formula, and you're looking for Fahrenheit. So look, F equals. So all this right here is going to tell you what F equals, the temperature that Fahrenheit is when it's seven degrees Celsius, okay? So I'm gonna go step by step and I'm gonna use my other board that away because that one's kind of small. So you have F equals nine fifths times 70 plus 32. Okay? So it should look just like that. See where I put 70? I put 70 where C was. Do y'all see that? I put 70 where C was. Okay? Now, we're gonna multiply first, okay? And what we're gonna multiply is that 9 fifths times that 70, and we're gonna put 70 over one. Now let's do some cancellations. Does nine and one have anything in common? No, they do not. You will not use one because it'll end up being the same numbers. But let's look at 70 and five. They do have something in common, and I can automatically say that because of our divisibility rule. Now, it ends with the zero. 70 has a zero in the ones place. It ends in zero. So I know it's divisible by five because the rule for, div um, the rule for uh, divisibility for five is it ends in zero or five. I shouldn't say ends. It has a zero or a five in the ones place, I should say. Excuse me. Okay, so how many fives can go into five? One. So I changed my five to a one. Now, how many fives can go into 70? Five times what makes 70? Five times what makes 70? Huh, well, if you don't know, you can divide. Go 70 divided by five. Okay, if you do not know, my marker's going out. 
So how many fives go into seven? One. Well, seven minus five is two. I can't do anything with that two, so I bring down my zero I have not used. How many fives go into 20? Four. So you can say that five goes into 70 14 times. Look at that. Look how much easier that was. Because now I just have ones at the bottom in my denominator. So I just automatically know that this is gonna be a whole number, okay? So you're gonna go 14 times nine. Well, nine times four is 36. So bring your six down, carry your three over. One times nine is nine, plus three is gonna give you 12. So you end up with 126. I should say 126 over one, which equals 126. Excuse me, I should say that. I can't skip that on y'all. Now, now, you have your 126, but you still have your plus 32 we have not done. So you have 126 plus your 32, because we still have not done 32. We just multiplied the fraction to what they gave us, the 70 in Celsius. So when we do that, six plus two gives you eight, and three plus two gives you five, and just your one plus zero is one. So your answer should be 158 degrees in Fahrenheit. So we just found what 70 degrees in Celsius is in Fahrenheit. Okay? Now, let's see if we have one that does the opposite, where we're going to turn our Fahrenheit into Celsius. And they do, okay? They do. Um, let's do C. Let's do C, okay? C says, a hun C says 104 Fahrenheit is to what in Celsius? That means we're going to do Celsius, the C equals 5 ninths times C minus your 32. So there's your formula, and there's your problem. I know I'm using the C E. Oh, Miss Lunsford. Excuse my excuse my mess up there. I didn't put the F. I put the C there. It's supposed to be F minus thirty-two. Excuse me. C equals five ninths times F minus thirty-two. I know I'm using this formula first off because they gave me what F is. F's gonna go right here. Plus look, I'm trying to find Celsius. So I want C equals, okay? C equals. So the first thing you're gonna do is what's inside the parentheses because of uh, order of operation. Just like we did a while ago, we multiplied first before we added. So let's do what's inside the parentheses. C equals five ninths times 104 minus your 32. So first, before I subtract, let's look at this. This is what your formula, you plugged in 104 degrees Fahrenheit inside where F was. So now we're gonna subtract 104 minus your 32. So, 104 minus 32. Well, four minus two is two. I borrow for the zero. The one becomes a zero. The zero becomes a 10. So you have 72. 
So C equals five ninths times your 72. I'm going to put the 72 over 1 because now we're messing with fractions. Now let's see if we can cancel out. Okay, your 5 and your 1 have nothing in common, but your 9 and your 72 do. They have 9 in common. 9 can make 72 and 9 can make 9, can't it? So 9 can go into 9 one time. And 9 goes into 72 8 times. So now multiply straight across. 5 times 8 is 40. And 1 times 1 is 1. So 40 over 1 equals 40. So your answer, let me show you what I did. So your answer is when it's 104 degrees in Fahrenheit, it is only 40 degrees in Celsius, okay? Okay, so just remember, think about, think about what they're wanting to know. Are they wanting to know Fahrenheit or they want to know Celsius? Whatever one they're looking for, the formula you know you're gonna use is if they're looking for Fahrenheit, you're gonna find the, fair, the, the formula that says F equals. If they're looking for Celsius, you're going to use C equals, okay? Just, just remember that when you're doing your test, okay? Please, it's so important. I know y'all are ready to, to, to end and it's, it's all a change and you're at home and it's hard. I understand it's hard for me too, but we have to keep going. I have to get you ready for next year. So we still have to keep trying, okay? <coughs> okay? All right. Another thing I wanna go over that I saw a lot of mistakes in is where we're dividing fractions. We're dividing fractions. So if I had two, two and two thirds divided by five six. Okay, so there's my first problem. So before I can do anything in multiplication and division with fractions, I have to change that mixed number into an improper fraction. My mixed number here is two and two thirds. To change it to an improper fraction, you're going to multiply first. You're going to multiply your whole number to your denominator. So 2 times 3 equals 6. Then you're going to add your numerator, which is 2. So 6 plus 2 is going to give you 8. And then you're going to put that 8 over 3. You're going to use the same denominator that's in your mixed number you're going to use it in your improper fraction. So I'm going to write this out. I'm going to go 2 times your 3 plus your 2, and it's all going to be over 3, divided by 5, 6. So right there, there's my first step. That's what I have to do right there. I have my whole number 2. I have my denominator, the three. I multiply those two together. Two times three is six. I add my numerator, which is two. So six plus two is gonna give me eight. So you're gonna have eight over three divided by five, six. I'm going step by step, okay? Now, I can't divide. I am going to use the inverse operation, and that is where I am going to switch. I'm going to invert the 5 6 into 6 fifths and change my operation to multiplication. 8 thirds times 
six fifths. Do y'all see what I did? I brought my numerator up to my, I'm sorry, I brought my denominator up to my numerator and my numerator went down to my denominator. Do y'all see that? I just switched them. Okay. Now the easiest thing to do, guys, because you have to reduce no matter what. Okay. So I think the easiest thing to do is do cancellation because you won't have these big numbers and you won't have to reduce because you've already reduced after you do the cancellation. So let's do this. Does eight and five have anything in common? No, they don't because five is prime and five, it's only made with five and one and five does not make eight. So they don't have anything in common. What about three and six? Well, yes, they have three in common because three can make three one time and three can make six two times. So I'm going to cancel those out. Three goes into three one time and three goes into six two times. Okay. Now let's multiply. Eight times two equals 16. And six and five times one is five. So I have 16 over 5. Guys, that's improper. I'm not, you cannot leave it that way. You'll have to reduce it. It's improper. It's improper. So what are you going to do? You're going to divide. You're going to divide. You're going to divide 5. Div I'm sorry, 16 divided by 5. Well, how many 5s go into 16? 3. Because 3 times 5 is 15. 16 minus 15 is 1. So you're left with the remainder of 1 fifth. So 16 over 5 equals 3 and 1 fifth. Oops. Okay, so I did a division problem with a mixed number. Now let's see about doing it with a whole number. You have 1 half divided by 4. 1 half divided by 4. You can put that 1 over the 4, okay? Now you're going to do the invert of that second fraction, which is 4 over 1. You're going to make it 1 half times 1 over 4. Four. So you have one half times one fourth. Cross multiply, uh, not cross multiplication, but look at, see if you can cancel out. Four and one, no. Nope. One and two, no. Nope. So let's just multiply. One times one is one, and two times four is eight. I have one eighth. It's already reduced. I don't have to do anything. Let's do where we have two mixed numbers, six and two thirds uh, divided by, excuse me, divided by one and one third. Well, what I just said to you a while ago is you cannot multiply or divide mixed numbers. You have to turn them to improper fractions and to make them improper, you have to multiply the whole number to the denominator and add the numerator and keep the same denominator. So I'm going to write it out. 6 times 3 plus 2, that's all under 3, not under, but above 3. 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3. So. I have it written out. So let's do the multiplication addition. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 2 is going to give you 20 over 3. Divided by 1 times 3 is 3 plus 1 is 4 over 3. 
So that's what it looks like so far. Okay. Now, let's invert. So 20 over 3 times 3 over 4. I just inverted and changed my sign to multiplication. I converted that second fraction, the 4 thirds, and I uh, inverted it to 3 fourths. So now let's do cross, cross cancellation. 3 can go into 3 one time. So I can cross those out. They have 3 in common. So 3 goes into 3 one time. Now look at your 20 and your 4. Well, they have something in common. 4, because 4 can make 20, can't it? And 4 can make 4. 4 goes into 4 one time, and 4 goes into 20 five times. Looky there. I pretty much reduced it. You're going to go 5 times 1, 5. And 1 times 1 is 1. 5 over 1 equals 5. Okay. Okay. Today's lesson. I hope that helped, that little review. <clears throat> That's where we're messing up. Today, we're comparing. Okay? It's not hard. We're comparing. Okay, comparing. So, your rule for today for comparing is use division to compare. I hope y'all are still taking notes. Use division to compare. I should say compare two numbers. Okay. So they give us an example of 81 pounds is nine times as heavy as nine pounds. Then they give us 2,700 miles is 10 times as far as 270 miles, okay? So they pretty much already did those, okay? They divided, your, your 81 pounds was divided by nine, and your 2,700 miles was divided by your 270. Now, I'm gonna do some examples that are not on your um, sheet, but, um, give you an example of what we're doing, okay? So, let's say I have a $10 bill and a $5 bill, okay? And they want us to compare them. How many times greater is the value of the $10 bill than the $5 bill? Well, what you would do is divide. What's 10 divided by five? That's two. It's two times, two times greater, okay? Two times greater. Now, when we want to compare two quantities, we can divide the greater quantity by the lesser quantity, okay? So, greater quantity, The greater quantity divided by the lesser quantity. Okay? Yeah, fit the whole word there. Okay? So greater quantity divided by the lesser quantity. So let's do this. If I had 
hundred dollars. So how many times greater is the value of the five hundred dollars than the twenty dollars? So all you would do is divide five hundred dollars divided by twenty dollars. So that's all you do. Okay? And when you do that, don't forget your dollar signs if they're talking about money, guys, okay? That's 20, that's 25 times greater, okay? It's 25 times greater. All right, let's do some that are on your paper. Let's look at those word problems. At the bake sale, the girls sold 99 cookies and 33 brownies. The cookies were how many times? The brownies. How many times? The cookies were how many times? The brownies. The cookies were 99. The brownies were 33. So you're dividing 99 divided by 33. Three times. Because 33 times 3 gives you 99. James weighed 4 kilograms when he was born. He now weighs 48 kilograms. How many times as heavy is he now as when he was born? You're going to divide. 48 divided by 4. Four times what gives you 48? On Monday, Mr. Brown traveled 432 miles. On Tuesday, he traveled 54 miles. How many times further did he travel on Monday than he traveled on Tuesday? Divide 432 divided by 54 and you get your answer, okay? Number two, fill in the blanks. Remember to use division to compare. 85 feet is blank times as far as five. That means you're going to go 85 divided by five. This is on 2A. 85 divided by five because we're going to see how many times is long, okay? 85 is how many times as long as 5 feet? 17. 96 pounds is blank times as heavy as 12 pounds. Well, that's B. You're going to do 96 divided by 12. 12 times what gives you 96. So you're just dividing. You're dividing the greater quantity by the lesser quantity. Okay? Okay, then you have the division of the fractions. I already went over that with y'all. Okay? Remember to reduce. Remember to reduce. Then you're filling in the blanks with the greater than or less than sign or equal sign, okay? Think about what you're doing. Think about what it says, okay? Then you're rounding. Y'all are doing wonderful on that. And then, like I said, I did two of the conversions of Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. I did A and I did C, okay? Then you're uh, doing the um, equations, okay? Um, when you're doing the fractions, you're changing um, the decimals to fractions, you have to reduce. So if, if it gives you 875 thousandths, yes, you're gonna put it over 875 over a thousand, right? Yes, that's how you do it, but don't leave it like that. You have to reduce. 
you have to reduce, 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 reduce. Okay? I'm not going to, I can say it over and over and over and over. Reduce. Okay? Reduce, 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 reduce. Then your um, 125 thousandths is going to be 125 over 1,000. Reduce it. 25 hundredths. 25 over 100. Reduce it. 75 hundredths. 75 over 100. One more thing I want to go over and then I'm done. If it says, if it has, um, let me see. Sonic's gonna growl. Um, 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 Okay, seven hundredths. Remember the place value, you have your decimal, and then after your decimal, you have the tenths, then you have the hundredths, right? And then you have your thousandths, right? That is saying seven hundredths. So where's hundreds at? It's right here, isn't it? So you don't have anything in the tenths. So you have to write it as 0 .07. You have to put that seven in front because, the, I mean the zero in front of the seven because if you don't, you're telling me seven tenths. Well, that's not what my fraction says, is it? It says seven hundredths, okay? So think about that. Also too, I'll give you a little hint too. If it is, if, it, if seven over a hundred, how many zeros are in a hundred? Two. So what you're gonna do is put your seven down. You're gonna move, you're going to move to the left two times because there's two zeros. One, two. And you'll add the zero. Did you see what I just did? If it was seven tenths, and you put seven down, you're gonna go to the left one time because there's one zero. So you hopped over one because there's one zero. But also you can do it by place value. I like for you to do it by place value just so that you can know your place value. Um, this is just a little trick too to help you. But I like for you to look at the place values too because I want you to know those place values. That's very, very, very important, okay? All right, guys. Well, good luck on your test tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions on it, you're more than welcome to call me or text me, okay? And I hope you are watching these videos, all right? All right, have a good week. I'll probably talk to you, I'll make a video on Wednesday for y'all, okay? Alrighty. Bye.